Greetings, everyone. Uh, my name is Brady Witten. I welcome you to worship here at First United Methodist Church in Baton Rouge. Welcome to those of you who are here in person and those who are joining us at home. So today is World Communion Sunday. The first Sunday of October is always World Communion Sunday. And it's a day we celebrate Jesus, we celebrate the good news of the gospel, and we celebrate our place in the church with Christians all over the whole globe. So if you can imagine all of those Christians gathered in worship this day. Uh, and we're going to celebrate the Lord's Supper together, and we're also going to hear a Jesus teaching about Christian service and Christian duty. Uh, and I invite you to stand and to join me in the opening prayer for World Communion Sunday. Almighty God, from the ends of the earth, you have gathered us around Christ's holy table. Have mercy on your church, troubled and divided. O oh God, we join with our sisters and brothers around the world in remembering Christ's sacrifice for us, for the opportunity to eat and drink together, and for the life we have received. We give you thanks and praise. In the abundance of your many gifts, grant us grace to fill one another's lives with love. Redeem restore and remold us until we are made new. Transform our daily bread into the bread of life and the cup that we drink into the cup of salvation. Amen. And now I invite you to join in our opening hymn. remain standing and join me in the prayer for illumination printed in your bulletin. Let us pray. Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as the scriptures are read and your word proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you say to us today. 
Amen. Today's reading is from the Gospel of Luke. The apostles said to the Lord, increase our faith. The Lord replied, if you had faith the size of a mustard seed, you could say to this mulberry tree, be uprooted and planted in the sea, and it would obey you. Who among you would say to your slave who has just come in from plowing or tending sheep in the field, come here at once and take your place at the table? Would you not rather say to him, prepare supper for me, put on your apron and serve me while I eat and drink? Later you may eat and drink. Do you thank the slave for doing what was commanded? So you also, when you have done all that you were ordered to do, say, we are worthless slaves. We have only done what we ought to have done. This is the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So in today's reading for Luke, we encounter uh, what, what are known as Jesus sayings. And they're not parables, they're not teachings, they're these little sort of aphorisms. And Luke has recorded two of them for us here. And there's one about faith. It says, if you have the uh, faith the size of a mustard seed, great things will follow. Uh, and the other is about Christian duty. When you do what is required of you, expect no special praise. And the meaning of both of these, I think, is pretty straightforward. There's not, there's not a lot uh, to sort of interpret here. In her book, Short Stories by Jesus, Dr. Amy Jill Levine concludes that Jesus' mustard seed illustration reminds us that even small actions or hidden actions have the potential to produce great things. And I think we all know that truth, right? Uh, I would encourage you not to read this illustration too literally. People get hung up sometimes when Jesus says, oh, if you say you can move a mulberry tree. Uh, I think what happens is people think, well, I have faith and things like that don't happen in my life. I think Jesus is just uh, kind of being, you know, make, making a big point here, again, saying, if you have faith the size of a mustard seed, amazing things can happen. The second teaching reminds us that when we follow Jesus, there are going to be times that we have to put aside our wants, we have to put aside our desires, and we are called to serve. We're called to serve uh, the cause of Christ. We're called to serve people who are in need. We're called to serve within the church. Uh, and in fact, as Christians, if we call ourselves Christians, we have a duty to serve. William Barclay says this, love always involves responsibility, and love always involves sacrifice. And if you think about it in your lives, maybe, maybe parents, uh, maybe people who've been caregivers for people that they love, uh, they re it requires what? Some responsibility, and what? Sacrifice. Uh, and Barclay says, we do not really love Christ unless we are prepared to take on these two things, responsibility and sacrifice. Uh, but while we have a duty to serve, one of the things I really want us to think about this morning is that duty and service do not mean drudgery. I, I don't know, do you ever think it's like, oh, you think, I go, duty and service, you know. Duty and service do not mean drudgery. There are times in life where we serve and we sacrifice and we do so gladly and with joy. So I was uh, talking to a church member this week who uh, used to take on this like enormous task, and it was even bigger than I realized when I kind of got into it with him a little bit. Uh, and this thing that he did took on a, a whole lot of work, uh, but it was work that he did gladly. So let me describe this to you and see if you can figure out what it is. It says, Wednesday morning, my brother-in-law would would, and I would make a Sam's or a Costco run and then head back to my house to store items in our deep freezer. Friday evening, we'd load the van and the trailer, propane, gas, ice chests, and we'd be on location by 5.30 or 6 a.m. Setup consisted of a dozen 10 by 10 tents, a grill, a 35-gallon jambalaya pot, fryers, burners, pots, utensils, a full load of decorations, two TVs with satellite hookups, a generator, and a sound system. 
It took our team of 12 people two hours to set everything up. And during the day, we would feed some 300 to 1,000 people. And then when it was all done, we'd tear down, clean up, dishes, pots, cookware, load up the trailer so it was ready for the next time. Anybody want to guess what this person was prepping for? <laughs> what is it? There you go. Yeah, I was thinking people would go, a mission uh, to feed the hungry, to feed, you know, no, this is LSU tailgating we're talking about. Uh, and what I described was the setup for the Mound Hounds Tiger tailgating, which Chris King and his crew did for 12 years. He said they do it every game day. And I, when I was thinking about it, I thought, Chris, I said, that was a lot of work, right? That's a lot of work, a lot of sacrifice. I mean, he spent money, he spent time, he spent energy. There was physical labor. I mean, this is hard stuff. I said, Chris, how did you feel about doing all that work? And you know what his answer was? I loved every minute of it. And they stopped uh, doing this right before COVID, and he says, I miss it. I miss it. See, there are times in life where we serve and we sacrifice and we give of ourselves, but we do so how? Joyfully. We do so joyfully. So I wanted, I wanted to kind of get you thinking about, can you think of a time or can you think of something in your life that you served, that you sacrificed, you did your duty, but you did it with great joy and gladness? Can you, can you think of something? I know I've, I've got some in my life, right? Why did you do it? Why did you do it? So this joyful obedience is something that we see from Christians all over the place in the New Testament. So they were called to sacrifice. Jesus called them to sacrifice and to give their lives. But we see over and over again that they did so joyfully. So in Acts 2, 44 and 47, we read this, All the believers were united and sharing things. They would sell pieces of property and possessions and distribute the proceeds to anyone who needed them. Every day they met together in the temple and ate in their homes, and they shared food with glad and with generous hearts. They praised God, and they demonstrated God's goodness to everyone. Now, I don't know if you caught that in there, but they were selling property and giving away their possessions. And a lot of times people go, oh, as a Christian, I have to, give, I have to be generous, and I have to give away my stuff, and I have to this. But did you see how they were with glad and with generous hearts, and they were praising God and demonstrating God's goodness in the world? And the next line in that scripture tells us, and people came and joined them in droves, right? Because there was this great joy and gladness in their love and service to the world. That's what the early church looked like. In 2 Corinthians 12, 15, when Paul is talking to the Corinthian church and he's talking about how he's going to travel there and it's going to, the difficulties of his journeys, he says, I will gladly spend and be spent for your sake. Gladly spend and be spent for your sake. And what I wanted to get, again, what I wanted to get us thinking about this morning is, do we understand the gospel and do we understand Christ do we understand what Christ is inviting us to and what, you know, what, we get to, what we get to share with the world in such a way that we will give of ourselves gladly? Do we understand it in such a way? And what I would say to you is, if, if we don't, I just always want to encourage you, keep digging, keep looking for that, that treasure of the gospel that's out there. Because the, the early church understood it in this way. It was a glad and generous giving. I will never forget the way that our church responded after the 2016 floods. Somebody, I was, I was asked to reflect recently, I was in it with a group of preachers, and they said, Brady, what was one of your favorite times in ministry? And believe it or not, I was kind of like going in my head, I'm going, what was one of my favorite times in ministry? It was the way our church responded after those floods. This was a devastating time for our community, but it was an amazing time in the life of our church. So by the time it stopped raining on Sunday, August the 14th, some four trillion gallons of water had fallen. 40,000 homes were flooded in 20 parishes. On Monday, after the rain stopped, we put out the call that we would like to receive donations at the church and that we would begin to send out work teams as soon as we were able. By the end of the day Monday, like we put out that call in the morning, by the end of the day Monday, our gym was filled with clothing, with diapers, with bedding, with cleaning supplies, and over a thousand pounds of canned and non-perishable foods. Within a day, we did that. By the end of the week, over 100 families had shopped in our gym. They'd kind of come through, gotten supplies, and we distributed the donations all over the community. By Tuesday, so remember, the rain stopped Sunday. By Tuesday, we had sent out our first work teams into the community, and by the end of the week, we had been in 71 homes within a week. 
A group of volunteers cooked 500 meals for Red Cross, Red Cross staff and volunteers. On Friday and Saturday that week, we began work cleaning out Hope Community, which was the United Methodist Church up in North Louisiana. We began doing work there and helping them clean up their property. We gave away a pallet of water and close to 1,000 meals in the neighborhoods around that church. We gave out nearly 1,500 flood buckets. Uh, when all was done, we estimated that over 400 youth and adults volunteered that week alone. 400 people who gave of themselves and gave of their time and gave of their energy. And in the coming months, over 2,000 volunteers came through the doors of our church and into the community, and we worked on some 600 different homes. And I got to tell you, it was a lot of work. And I know many of you participated in that. It was a lot of work, but it was joyful work. It was hard work, but we served with joy. Why? Because we knew that people were hurting and that we could bring them some relief. The task was overwhelming, <laughs> but we did it with joy. Why? Because we knew that we are called to love our neighbors uh, and to be Jesus' hands and feet in the world. The days were long. Remember, our, our staff, without even asking, would show up here at like 6 a.m. in the morning, and there'd be people out at the door going, hey, we want to come in and help, 6 a.m. The days were long and they were tiring, but we served with joy. Why? Because we knew that we were bringing more than labor and we were bringing more than food. We were bringing faith, hope, and love to people who needed those things desperately. One family told us this, we have been totally blessed by the volunteers from First United Methodist Church. They have done work not only on our house, but on our family's hearts. So again, I want to ask you, do you understand Jesus? Do you understand what he's invited us to? And do you understand what we, we're called to be a part of in such a way that you would gladly serve, that you would sacrifice, that you would give of yourself, but that you would do so what? Joyfully, joyfully. So uh, we're living in uh, challenging times in our world. We really are. Uh, I know people are anxious about the divisions in our nation, and I, I worry about that a little bit too. I worry more that the divisions in our nation are making their way into the church and that we are being divided and we are disagreeing because of different opinions and things that the world is, is pushing us into. And I think there's some questions we have to ask ourselves as people of faith. And this isn't, this isn't just First Methodist Church. It's not just Methodist churches. It's Christians all over the place. First, the first question is, do we trust God? Do we have faith the size of a mustard seed that we believe that God, even in the midst of the things that we can fight and fuss over and that are pulling us apart, that this is God's church and that this is God's work and God's calling and that if we will put our faith in God, that God will do amazing and great things, if we'll just keep our eyes focused on God and on our call as Christians. And then the other thing I think that we really need to do is to dive into Christian service. Let's put aside all this arguing and fighting that we're doing as Americans or Democrats or Republicans or whatever it is, conservatives, progressives, but let's dive into Christian service because ultimately what we are called to do is to care for hurting people in the world. And when we're arguing with each other, we're not caring for hurting people. We're not. It always amazes me whenever I see a church come together in this awesome way like we did in 2016, and I think, you know, if we all stood around while we were serving and said, well, Dan, tell me your opinion about this, or Amy, tell me your opinion about this. I mean, nobody has time for that. Why? Because we have people that we are loving and caring for, and we have people that we need to serve. Now, it's not that our opinions don't matter. We can talk about those things that afternoon after we've worn ourselves out loving and serving other people and then go, all right, let's talk about this. Do we have faith in God that this is God's church and that God will do amazing things if we'll just be faithful? And I think we should throw ourselves into Christian service. So today is World Communion Sunday. It's a day we celebrate Jesus, we celebrate the gospel, and we celebrate our place in the church with Christians all over the world. We can do amazing things if we will come together and joyfully serve. So as we celebrate, let us remember what Jesus has done for us, who Jesus has called us to be, 
and let us serve him with joyful obedience. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. When we offer God our confession, we join in the beautiful work of reconciliation, which begins first with our reconciling with God. But trusting in God, let us now make our confession in silent prayer. Gracious and loving God, open our hearts so that we are able to admit to you the fullness of our lives, that which is beautiful and good, and that which is hurtful and hateful. We confess that we do not follow Jesus in all that we do. We love with condition. We judge and condemn. We cast the first stone and keep logs in our own eyes. We do not turn to you as the source of our healing. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Friends, know this. The mercy of God is from everlasting to everlasting. And I remind you of this surpassing grace. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Alleluia. Amen. And as people who are reconciled with God, let us turn to our neighbor and be reconciled by sharing the peace of Christ with each other. Peace be with you. I love that moment when we take and we turn to one another, and it it actually is a moment of worship, because remember, as we are called to love God, uh, Jesus always very quickly turns us and says, and don't forget about loving loving each other, so it's a a beautiful moment. And as we share that time together uh, and and remember that we are a community of faith, I want to share a few things with you that are happening in the life of the church. Um, First thing I want you to note is that the flowers this morning are given to the glory of God and in memory of Reverend Gene Reeves by his family. And uh, also want to ask you to take a moment and find the attendance pads that are at the end of each pew. And remember to mark your attendance there. The inside, you'll find connect cards. It's just a way you can re- let us know that you're in worship this morning. Uh, if you're a regular attender and you know that we have your information, just your name uh, is, is good and let us know you were here. If you're visiting, first of all, welcome. We're really glad to have you. And if you could share a little more information with us, we'd just like to be able to reach out and say welcome. And those of you who are at home, you'll find a connect card link uh, online. There's also prayer request cards in the pews if you have a prayer request this morning. Uh, The Connect cards and the prayer request cards can go in the offering plate when they go by, or you can bring those uh, prayer request cards and share them with me. Um, So let's see. As you all know, uh, if you were watching the news, Hurricane Ian hit Florida and is making its way up the coast. And uh, we want to, as we so often do, take up an offering to offer relief to those folks. And so you will see in your bulletin a couple of different ways you can do this. There is a QR code. And if you don't know how to do a QR code, uh, just open the... If, if you have a smartphone, which everybody has a smartphone by now, right? So uh, open the camera. No, not everybody. Anyways, <laughs> open the camera on your phone. And if you just point the camera at that QR code, it'll open a link up that you can click, and it'll take you right to the web page. It's very simple to use. Uh, you can do it that way. You can always go to our church's website and select Ian in the drop-down menu. Uh, And those of you at home, you can go online or you can text the word Ian to 22525. And if you really want to do it the old-fashioned way, you can write Ian in the memo of a check. 
if you want to do that and put it, put it in the offering plate. Uh, I do want to let you all know we took up an offering a, a month or so ago for tornado relief in Kentucky, and our congregation gave a little under $11,000 for that offering. So thank you always for your generosity, and I encourage your generosity for Ian Relief as well. And we've decided that that money is going to go to the Florida Annual Conference of the United Methodist Church. They're doing a lot of direct relief work, and we have a, a line there. So... Uh, Last thing I want to let you know is when we come for communion, uh, there are a few instructions. Uh, First of all, we will serve communion by intinction, so you'll receive a piece of bread. We invite you to dip it into the cup and receive both elements together at the same time. Uh, We will have a gluten-free station for those of you who need that option, and it'll be over here by the green banner. Uh, We will, when I invite people to come to the table, start with the balcony and invite you all to come down, uh, and the rest of you will be led by the ushers. And if you have mobility issues and need to stay in your pew, uh, let an usher know that, and we will bring communion to you. And with those things said, I invite you to bow your heads with me as we uh, invite the ushers forward and offer a blessing on this offering. Let us pray. Dear God, for whom and through whom all things exist, you have named us beloved children and call us to live as brothers and sisters of Christ. On this World Communion Sunday, we rejoice that you gather us around the table of your Son. May our offerings reach out to bring hope and grace to our neighbors whom you know and love. And we pray all these things in the most excellent name of Jesus. Amen.
And I invite you to join me in the great thanksgiving, which is in your bulletin and on your screen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is good and fruitful work to give thanks to you, Almighty God, in all places, in all times, and in all our tasks, in our cars, our homes, our offices, our fields, and our kitchens, at our tables, our desks, our telephones, and computers, when we are resting or waiting, laboring or supervising, following or leading. All these we do with your people now on earth and all in the multitude of heaven, praising your name and joining their unending hymn. are you and blessed is your son Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. He commissioned us to be his witnesses to the ends of the earth and to make disciples of all nations. And today his family in all the world is joining at his holy table. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread he gave thanks to you. He broke the bread. He gave it to his disciples, and he said, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup. He gave thanks to you. He gave it to his disciples, and he said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of a new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of your sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and the blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. Renew our communion with your church throughout the world and strengthen it in every nation and among every people to witness faithfully in your name. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Now I invite you to join me in the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. This is the body of Christ. And now I want to invite those of you who are joining us at home to what we call spiritual communion, which is a way that you can participate in this holy moment uh, from home. And so I invite you to join me in the prayer for spiritual communion. Let us pray. 
Lord Jesus, I believe you are spiritually present in the sacrament of Holy Communion. I love you above all things and hunger to be drawn closer to you. Although I am unable to be physically present at your table, I ask you now to come spiritually into my heart. I welcome and embrace you. I unite myself to you and to the church, past, present, and future. Let nothing ever separate me from you or you from me. Amen. And now we'll rejoin our, the congregation in the sanctuary. open communion table. Everyone here is invited and everyone is welcome. Come, the table is ready.
Let us pray. Almighty God, we give you thanks for this holy meal, this mystery in which you make yourself available to us. And this day, we remember those all around the world who join us at this table. And Lord, we ask that you would remind us of your presence, fill us with your grace, and send us into the world to be your servants, your hands, and your feet to a world that needs the good news of Jesus. And it is in his precious name that we pray. Amen. So it's always a privilege as part of worship uh, to extend an invitation to anyone here who wants to become a member of this congregation, this fellowship, uh, to, to consider doing that. So if you're a Christian person and you're looking for a church family, we would love for you to make First Methodist Church your church home. If you're a person who's considering following Jesus, we would also love for you to make a commitment to Christ and to follow, uh, follow Him as part of our church. We have a gathering that we call Believe and Belong, and we talk about what does it mean to believe in Jesus? What does it mean to belong to a church? And uh, the upcoming dates are October 6th or 9th. You will find more information in your bulletin about that, and I would love to have you uh, attend. Also want to make sure you know that we do have a resource table in the back of the sanctuary, so it's right out that door and to the left, and there are some books there, one with some basic teachings about the Christian faith. It's called The Good and Beautiful God. There are some copies there of a book called Making Sense of the Bible, if you want to uh, uh, learn a little more about the Bible, and there's also a book there about the basics of the United Methodist Church, who we are, some of our history, what we believe, and we invite you to take any of those with you if you want to do that this morning. And I invite you to stand now as we sing our closing hymn together.
As we go from this place, let us remember what Jesus has done for us and who Jesus calls us to be. Let us keep the faith uh, and let us commit ourselves to Christian service, to Christian duty, and to joyful obedience. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.